Okay, I am going to take you guys through the steps to create this freezer paper shirt. In the um, description of the video, I'll have links to everything, including where you can get this pineapple with sunglasses design. Okay, so I put my freezer paper shiny side down on my mat and I burnish it to the mat. I pick the washi tape setting on the machine. This cuts fine for me. Uh, for other people, you may need to try a different setting. Um, and I weed it right on the mat. And then what I'm taking here is a heat transfer tape. It's from uscutter.com. And this is going to go over the whole design. And I'm going to burnish it down just to make sure it's all stuck on there and pull the design right up and all the little bits are going to come with it. Um, with this uh, design, the only two really loose bits are the reflections on the sunglasses. Um, so technically you could, you could just do this, move it by hand, but I wanted to show you how this heat transfer tape works and I'll include a link to where they, where they sell it. And now I'm just pulling it off the mat. Everything's going with the transfer tape. And I am set my iron on uh, six or the second highest setting, or it may be cotton setting on your iron. I like to iron the shirt just so it's nice and smooth and flat before I uh, place uh, my design on it. So we're going to place the design right on the shirt and we're going to iron right over the heat transfer tape. Underneath the freezer paper stencil is starting to get stuck to the t-shirt. And this is exactly what we want. So now what we're going to do is we are going to pull the transfer tape off of it and it is going to leave the stencil right on the shirt. Just like that. Now what I like to do is I like to go over it uh, one more time with the iron just to make sure everything is completely down. Um, I missed one step after this. I like to put paper or cardboard or something in between the shirt so that the paint doesn't leak through from the front of the shirt to the inside or the back of the shirt. I'm using Tulip Slick. It's just what I happen to have on hand. I'm being pretty brave and daring doing um, fabric paint on a white shirt. And I end up adding about four coats of this to, uh, to get the, the white as you know solid as I'd like it. I use this old brush. Um, it's real soft and I don't know. It's just a it's just a junky brush. It's probably from Walmart, and I just lightly put the paint on um, because I know I'm doing several coats. I'm doing a nice uh, thin coats each time, and then um, you know add as many coats as you want. Don't push the brush around too much. You don't want paint getting under the stencil, but if it's going to get under the stencil, it's going to get under it. If uh, your seal wasn't uh, tight to begin with when you ironed it down. So it's pretty simple. I think I'm adding the second coat here. Like I said, I end up adding two more coats before I pull the stencil. Watch out for brush marks too. You know, you don't want to leave brush marks in your paint, especially, um, when you finish and it's not like completely whited out. Okay, so that's it. Uh, you could pull the stencil wet or dry. Um, I like to wait till it's dry. Um, I can't wash this for 72 hours per the instructions on the tulip paint. So um, I don't know how it'll turn out. And <laughs> once I wash it, if I can update this video, I will and let you know. Um, I just want to say there are other fabric paints out there you can get. Um, if you're unsure what you want to try, if you want to try the Speedball Fabric Ink, or um, if you want to try just regular craft paint, get an old t-shirt and test them all. See which one you like the best.
All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys.